All right, so we should be live right about now. Um, gonna give everybody a couple seconds to jump on in here. Uh, while we're doing that, I'm gonna jump over to Scryfall and look at our commander we are brewing today. How's everybody doing? Cool, cool, all right, so uh, I would love if people could tell me how the audio is, stuff like that. Yeah. Hey, what's up, friends? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so, today uh, we are going to be brewing Jetmir, Nexus of Rebels. So, there's a brand new Streets of New Capetta Commander. It's going to be pretty fun. Going to be going through all of that stuff. Um, so,. This is going to be a first for this channel because, uh, I guess second, because we did this once with Hire from uh, Playing With Power. So we are going to be brewing this deck right now, live. Uh, we're going to be doing it with your help, chat. So welcome. Thank you for joining me. And we're going to be just uh, just having a good time. It's going to be it's gonna be some fun stuff. So yeah, let's just jump right in. So... <clears throat> We're going to start a new deck over here in Moxfield. Boom. Uh, going to call it Live Brew 5, 11, 22, Jetmere. Not a sexy name, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. Wow. I hit six buttons. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Boom. This be a public deck. Bam. So we're really just going to hit this baby fresh. Um, I'm gonna, so, so I guess let's, let's talk about the, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you my Moxfield password, get out of here chat. <laughs> um, so let's talk about what we're doing here today. Let's talk about what we're going for direction wise with this list, how we take this commander from a concept to a CEDH viable commander and whether that's even going to happen with this, uh, with this commander uh gotta gotta switch to the the good art here um <clears throat> although honestly if they had a more zoomed in version of the other art i, I kind of like that better I, I think just like look he's full party cat here like he's got his little goblet no it's a scepter in one hand whatever anyways <laughs> the art is not super relevant um so we are going to start and this concept is just we want to take you know what we make cedh decks from like all the ideas behind it taking an archetype maybe focusing on that a little more and just like the basic building blocks of like how you make a deck and and bring this one to light through it um if you guys like stuff like this uh when i post this video as like a video video i'd love people to comment on it i love the engaged chat right now um but yeah, I mean, feel free to throw this stuff in the Discord. Uh, feel free to do anything like that. Just tell me you guys enjoy this content because it helps a ton. Uh, like this video, subscribe, all that junk. Uh, <laughs> you know, check out Patreon, all that stuff. But uh, if you guys like this stuff, it's going to happen more and more, basically, because uh, I really enjoy doing it. Um, I'm currently doing a, a theater show right now, uh, so that's been taking up a lot of my free time, but I have been thinking about streaming more and more. I might move over to Twitch and then post the videos to YouTube later. Uh, so, you know, guys, keep me, keep me afloat on what you, uh, what you think about that and whether that's something you guys would be interested in, whether doing more live stuff, trying to jag chat over here so I can do this at the same time. Um, so... This one's very interesting, Jetmere specifically, because of the fact that I have tinkered around with it a little bit beforehand. It was a deck that, at least I like the concept of this commander right away as sort of a win conless stacks commander. So that was sort of the initial concept when I saw this card. Now, I looked at it and I think my initial version went just way too hard into the like win conless part of it um and the idea there was to basically be like okay like i don't want to have anything that isn't like just stopping what your opponents are doing and then you get to play jet mirror and then just beat your opponents to death 
I think that is a better thing for like mono white specifically, a deck like Charles's Heliod deck. Um, I think that this archetype, because we have access to red and green, we can have a little more options as far as like going pure win con list as comparatively to making taking advantage of the fact that we're in the Naya colors, right? The Naya colors have a lot of really solid options because you're expanding from like a mono colored stack stack all the way to three colors. And when you expand out color wise, I think it's it adds a lot of versatility. So <clears throat> first thing we're gonna do, um, when I play a stack deck, I always uh, start with adding the lands. Uh, any deck, I start with adding the lands just so I'm not accidentally going way too hard into the non land permanents. Um, my placeholder for stacks decks specifically is 32. Now, this is a green stacks deck, meaning it has more early game creature ramp. And because it has more early game creature ramp, it is a little. Uh, it, it, you don't have to go all the way to 32, but we're going to start with 32 just to be safe. And then I just, I always name like a, a basic land. So we're going to start with 32 planes because memes. Uh, <laughs> and now, so what's the things we do right now, right? Um, let's think about what this deck is trying to do. So we are a stacks deck, but let's get, let's get the vegetables out of the way, right? Uh, let's get all the stuff that is, you know, the stuff that you just, like, if you're playing these colors, you should play X, Y, or Z, right? So, for example, things like Esper Sentinel, right? Like, I don't know of a deck in these colors that does not want to play this card. Um, let's talk about Dockside, right? Uh, Dockside is extremely powerful, and, you know, later on during this deck tech, we may find out that we want to go heavier into things like the collector oof synergies things like that but until we are very very sure of that i <laughs> secret rendezvous get out of here chat <laughs> um yeah <laughs> sorry that, really, that one really got me off guard um but yeah definitely dock side um also, I have some people talking about uh, lists that have already been worked on in chat. The whole point of uh, doing this right now is to completely start from the fresh, start from the very beginning. So we're going to do all that stuff. Um, the green staples, I think, that are super relevant in a deck like this. Uh, let's talk about the elves, right? Um, and mana dork specifically. So birds of paradise. Absolutely. Anytime you're playing a green deck, especially one that's creature based, right? So like we don't need our elves to be attacking to be like payoffs with Jetmere, but they really, really help, right? Um, and the fact that they get vigilance as the first Jetmere trigger is really, really strong. Um, actually, let's let's read Jetmere now because I think it's important to recognize, uh, especially that first part there, right? Um, <clears throat> so it's a five four for one in Naya. Uh, creatures you control get plus one plus zero and have vigilance as long as you control three or more creatures, which I think is absolutely the most relevant part of that card right the vigilance is an amazing ability in any sort of grindier stack deck uh when you have cards like mother of runes and giver of runes who i mean i'm just going to add now to be honest because i don't see a world where i ever don't want to play those cards um and when you can start like attacking with these creatures and then still give your creatures protection with these cards i think that's really really strong um so that's why we're kind of looking at this card and you only need two other creatures in the board to get the first buff from jetmir um then they get plus one plus oh and trample as long as you control six or more creatures and uh hence my previous statement jetmir is a creature right so he always counts for these things so you need two more creatures for one oh and vigilance you need five more creatures for one oh and trample and then you need eight more creatures for plus one oh and double strike so that's pretty strong, right? Um, and if you get to that last line of text, if you have eight or more creatures on top of having Jetmere, like uh, plus three, plus oh, Vigilance, Trample, Double Strike, your opponents are dead, right? Uh, I don't think you even need to get there. I think the the o, one oh and Vigilance is enough to make a lot of cards really good, and I think one o, or two plus o and Trample and Vigilance is very, very strong, right? Um, just going to read chat a bit here. Uh, so let's go and 
let's go back to these dorks, right? Now that we've covered that part. So Birds of Paradise, obviously auto-include. Um, we're three colors, so I'm inclined to include Arbor Elf as it has the highest potential, biggest downside, but highest potential of any mana dork in these colors apart from Birds of Paradise uh, due to the fact that it... Um, it can untap your taigas, it can untap your savannas, so uh, your stomping gardens, or, or uh, stomping grounds, your temple gardens, all, I think I combined those two words. Um, I saw someone in chat saying, Avacyn's Pilgrim, very good call. Uh, let's go with all the mono green ones, right? These are the auto includes every time you're working um, with these colors, so Elvish Mystic, you want your Lanoir Elves. Uh, now, auto-includes, obviously, you know, if you're playing, like, a Turbo Nas deck in these colors, they're not auto-includes, but I think it's pretty safe here. Finhorn Elves. Those are the, those are the big ones for now. Those are the, the one-drop options, unless I'm forgetting any, and luckily you are here, chat, to, to uh, help me with that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I will be posting this video um, later, friends, so if you guys find that you have other things you need to be taking care of right now, I know this is Celtics game, some people are in uh, Europe and unable to stay up for this whole time, uh, absolutely, get your rest, you guys can watch this tomorrow for sure. Uh, no, I have not already shot down Hidden Commander Winota, and that is an angle we will at least have a discussion on uh, later in the deck, I think it's kind of funny. Um, while I can see Priest of Titania being good in a deck like this, I don't think, or I, Priest of Titania is good in a general sense, uh, it, it being good in a certain meta, um, but specifically, we don't really have a lot to filter like a ton of green mana into, so I don't really think that's quite the option we're going for here. Bloom Tender is definitely worth considering, I might add that to considering pile. Um, for later when we realize whether we do or do not want mana dorks of that nature. I mean, Jetmere automatically turning Bloom Tender into your five mana is pretty solid, right? Um, but we'll come off that. We'll get back to that later. So let's talk about the artifacts, right? So we're going to start brewing this deck as if we are not a collector oof deck, and then we can go from there. So let's talk about... If we're not playing Collector Oof and we're not worried about the nuances, what are like the automatic artifacts that you should be playing? Or even so, what are the artifact <clears throat> what are the artifacts we're playing even if we are on Collector Oof, right? So let's talk about the staples, right? There's Lotus Petal. It helps with the early acceleration. Some decks don't run it, some stack decks don't run it. Totally worth talking about here. There's Mana Crypt. Um also tough in a stacks deck, right? Like, Mana Crypt dings you turn after turn after turn. We don't have natural lifelink in the command zone. Uh, Soul Ring. It's Chromox. Chromox, uh, anytime I'm playing a Collector Oof, I do not play Chromox, even though I know there are people who enjoy that card. I just... It's so painful to play Chromox sometimes, and you're, like, pitching a card from your hand to get one turn of acceleration to, like, play your Oof a turn later. Like, it's just... It's so awkward. Um, and Mox Diamond. Mox Diamond I tend to be much more forgiving of in decks like this because you tend to be playing more lands anyways if you're playing a heavier stacks deck, right? Uh, so there's that. Anyways. Um, great. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the basics. Um, I know some people were suggesting some of the more... Uh, aggressive mana dorks per se so things like uh, tinder wall and orcish lumberjack those are really so, <laughs> so true okami um the orcish lumberjack and tinder wall are options that i would say they're much more facing for a like a proactive list sorry about that uh so something like a turbo Nas archetype or a breach archetype or something where you want to sacrifice your resources for speed whereas in this archetype we are trying to slow the entire table down and we're trying to get resources that are going to get us value turn after turn after turn right okay so as we said, we're not a fast combo deck, right? I, I don't think you can see Jetmere here and be like, ah, yes, this, <laughs> this commander screams fast combo, because uh, it doesn't. <laughs> but let's talk about what it does say. It does say let's play a stacks archetype, right? That's what we're leaning towards. Um, 
the there is a there's an option here to either go into rule of laws and if we go into rule of laws it's decent for the archetype however it's problematic for playing a creature based stacks deck in the sense that we like our opponents are limited to one spell per turn and although Jetmir is very powerful it does not actually limit uh, it does not actually provide us any sort of advantage, whether card advantage or mana advantage, under a rule of law that other archetypes aren't using. So, seeing as we're a creature deck, I think it's extremely safe to at least play Deafening Silence. Um, and as far as the others, I'm, I'm happy to put them in the considering board here. So let's go over the classic uh, rule of law archetypes. There's Aether Sworn, Canonist. Cryfall. <laughs> no, no. Come on. Don't crap out on me now. Let's go. Uh... <laughs> Alright, well, while well, that's loading, I'm going to read chat. <laughs> um... Huh. Yeah, obviously. Okay, so we're when eventually this loads, we're going to have Archon of Amiria. Okay, we're going to refresh this page. Try that again. Oh, you're kidding me. Hey, there we go. Okay. Uh, Archon of Emiria. We have Eidolon... Oh, no, I'm, I might be actually adding these to the deck. It's fine. We'll figure that out after. Eilon of Rhetoric, uh, Actual Factual Rule of Law. Eidolon, Archon, Aether Sworn. Uh, and I have Deafening. And I think that's... Oh, God, am I forgetting one? I think that's it. I think that's it. <laughs> uh... All right, cool. So we are going to throw these down in the considering because, as I said, we're not sure we actually want to uh, play these right now because of the way uh, the deck works. And I'm, I'm leaning more towards not. Um, so then what other kind of stacks do we want? Uh, Jetmir gets paid off for playing more creatures, right? Which means uh, if we flip that on its head, Jetmir should be wanting to play effects that encourage creature archetypes to be stronger and non-creature archetypes to be worse right so obviously thalia guardian of thraben right we want to uh, tax our non-creature spells from our opponents right um and let's start with the radical side of this let's let's play all of those effects right so all of those that are reasonably costed so that's thorn of amethyst it's not a creature itself but you know it does the thing we want it to do um and then there's also uh glow rider which is by far the worst version of this effect because it's uh it costs three and then has a terrible stat line and then there's friend wingmare which is very similar but has flying which honestly is a world of difference <laughs> uh and i'm a big fan of friend wingmare um okay so i'm i'm happy with that inclusion i think I'm I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a collector roof deck if I if I was a betting man. Uh, that's what it's leading to me. As I said, once again, we are trying to like the artifacts aren't really helping our game plan a lot, and the shutting down of our opponents' ar artifacts so that we can win sort of this attritiony battle seems pretty strong, right? Um, oh, uh, good good point, chat. Someone's uh, mentioning Ragavan. Ragavan's pretty interesting. I think given the fact that even if we end up being a collector oof deck, uh, we are prioritizing going into combat pretty frequently. And because of that, Ragavan is worth it even if it's not actually making mana and just generating us card advantage. And if it's doing both, then, then that's awesome, right? Um, so I'm going to throw it down to the sideboard here because I'm pretty confident we're going to play at least collector oof, right? Uh, <coughs> collector oof. Then there's Null Rod, and there's Stony Silence, right? So those are all the like most frequently played uh, stacks that shut down artifacts. There's also Kataki, which uh, I, 
I'm not not a fan of. I think Kotaki's fine. Um, it doesn't really do anything against like Dockside specifically, but it's worth looking at. Um, another one that doesn't suck is uh, Manglehorn, and I'm actually willing to just put that right in the main deck because I think it's just solid. So Manglehorn, for those who don't know, comes in, pops an artifact, and uh, artifacts your opponent's control under the battlefield tap, which is really awesome. So you can like proactively remove, even if it's something as low quality as a mana crypt, right? You pop a man mana crypt, and then suddenly your opponents can't uh, can't accelerate out their early threats, right? Um, so back to stacks pieces. Uh, um, so for someone in chat was asking about damping matrix, and I'd love to talk about that card. I can't spell. Sorry, chat. Uh, so let's look at Damping Matrix um, because this is actually a really interesting card. So it's activated abilities of artifacts and creatures can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. This is a really powerful card that also is really powerful against you, right? It is really hard to uh, stop this card doing its thing, which is great to stop your opponents, but not great because it's stopping you as well. My inclination with Damping Matrix is that I would rather be playing things like um, like Giver of Runes and Mother of Runes and Yisan, which is a card we will get to at some point. Um, so I'm willing to put in, in the considering board if you want to play a more aggressive version of this deck, but I don't think that's where my brain will go to, first of all. Um, I saw someone in the chat earlier mention... Yasharn. Now, Yasharn's another one I want to talk about because it's it's really tough. Yasharn is very hard to play in general because of the fact that it shuts down so many good mana pieces, right? So if you play Yasharn, you're inclined not to play a lot of fetch lands, right? Because uh, you can't sacrifice non-land permanents or, or you can't pay life to uh, activate abilities, right? That's the part that shuts down fetch lands, right? So you can't, because uh, fetch lands require you pay one life, you look for a land, right? Um, it also encourages you to play basics, which are tough, but you can't even play things like City of Brass or Mana Confluence, or you can play one of those and not the other ones, or the Pain Lands. Uh, the, it severely limits the lands you can play, and it makes your mana base much worse along with the fact that it doesn't allow you to play the lands that can sort of fix that problem, right? Um, so, for example, if this was... It's not like a Magus of the Moon, which I'm actually happy to think about, uh, or, you know, Blood Moon as well, but I, I think in a creature deck like this one where we're paid off for having creatures, Magus is a lot better, um, obviously. <laughs> but, like, Magus of the Moon, I think, is a lot stronger or, or, or at least a lot more synergistic with what we're trying to do because Magus of the Moon will allow us to still play our fetch lands, be able to go grab our basics, and then we won't get punished like our opponents will, right? Whereas with the Sharn, we can't even play fetches. We can't even play Mana Confluence. We can't play the Pain lands. And our lands really start to have a, sort of a burden when your Sharn's on the battlefield. Um, you know, it's easier when your Sharn's in the command zone because you can build this two-color deck around it, but like for our deck, we'll be playing worse cards for a reasonable amount of time just so we can play a Sharn that we won't even guarantee to see all the time. Um, uh, chat asking about Root Maze. Root Maze is one I don't think about a lot. Um, that's not a bad option here. I just... I guess why not play Root Maze? It's really strong against... It's really strong against the faster decks of the format. It completely hoses decks that use Kiki Jiki as a win con, which I assume will be seeing a small uptick due to the fact that Vivian was just printed. Um, it really does a number against Dockside. It really does a number, as I said, against Fast Mana. Um... <clears throat> The thing with Root Maze is it takes a smart pilot to use it <laughs> because it takes a lot of thought about timing-wise. Because if you just jam a turn one Root Maze and don't really think about it, you're often shooting yourself in the foot really, really badly. Um, so knowing to, to, to hit the Root Maze at the right time is very interesting. Um, yeah, uh, chat was asking about... 
<laughs> we play 32 planes, it's fine for you, Sharn. That's that's pretty good, chat. I'm not going to lie, that was pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's let's talk about... Um, I'm 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 fine with keeping root maze in here for now. Uh, it might be awkward in the later game with us, you know, needing more and more land drops, but we'll, we'll tackle that when we tackle that. I'm also happy to put Magus the Moon in the considering board right now. Uh, we're a three color deck. It might be just better for us to play, you know, lands that do stuff like Baseju and Iganjo and Gaia's Cradle. Gaia's Cradle will be a real big loss there. Um, so it may be more relevant for us to play lands like that than it would be to, you know, occasionally have a Gitcha option in Magus the Moon. So we'll, it's once again, uh, the considering board, if, if anyone is familiar with my lists at all, um, you will see this be almost as big as the deck list by the end, right? <laughs> and especially because we're using this as sort of a teaching option. Um, so, moving on. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I think Yisan is a good option. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, I think, you know, if you're playing a stack deck, you're trying to break parity on either rule of law or taxing effects. Uh Yisan's just usually really, really good in those archetypes. Um, I don't know how the deck is going to play out, but I have been very happy with Captain Sisse in my uh, stacks decks lately because um, one card that will probably end up playing is Eleshnorn. Uh, that card's obviously insane. You know, I'm actually just going to add it now because anytime I'm playing a stacks deck... That is very creature heavy. I, I always like to have Elish Norn in the top. And uh, that, that card really just absolutely ruins people's day. <laughs> um, but, you know, having Yisan, which is another creature tutor, sure. But, like, Thalia, you can grab off of it. Uh, Captain Sisse allows you to just go fetch your guy's cradle. Play that as your land for turn. Um, and I feel like the farther we go down into this, the more we're going to have legendary creatures that are worth finding. Uh, this might be a hot take. I don't know. But I, I have been enjoying Captain Sisse as of late. So as of right now, Sisse is gonna Sisse is gonna chill with us. Um, oh, great, great suggestion there, chat. Uh, Linvala, yeah, absolutely. A big problem with uh, stack stacks often is that you can't do a lot against the grindier creature decks, so Thrasio style decks, uh, things like that. So being able to shut down, or or your opponents who are doing the same nonsense that you are, right? Like if you're a stack deck and your opponent's playing Yisan like as the commander, you're in trouble unless you find your Linvala. So Linvala is very very solid. Um, <clears throat> speaking of this effect, the Pithing Needle on a body, I think Phyrexian Revoker is totally a great option for that. I have been very happy with that card whenever I play a stack deck. I love it in Winota. I, I have it in my current uh, Abzan Kodama deck that I'm playing for the MLC right now. Uh, at Revoker really can just, you know, uh, there's games where you're playing mid-range pods and it, you know, two mana, Thrasios, I have a, a beater, and now none of my opponents, Timna Thrasios or, you know, Thrasios X decks can activate their Thrasios. It's, it's a real thing, uh, and it's super impactful whenever it happens. So, big big fan of Revoker. Um, yep, an, another great one suggestion here from chat. Just kind of like a stacks auto-include uh, absolutely is Draineth Magistrate, right? Probably solid contender for the best stacks piece in Commander period uh you know arguably one of the best well i mean in commander specifically it's it might be one of the best of all time um and you know uh, other formats obviously is a lot worse but when your commanders are a turns out a big part of your deck <laughs> because they're the most consistent thing you have access to being able to say no opponents you can't do that uh, is really damn good <laughs> okay so um now, I want to see... All right, chat. There is one hate bear in particular that I have not put in here. It's one hate bear that I think is maybe... There is another version of it, I'll say, that's not in these colors. And it might be one of the best hate bears of all time. 
that's my first hint. There's there's a copy of it, not in these colors, that does similar but not the same thing. One of the best hate bears of all time. We haven't put it in yet. I want to see if you guys can get it. <laughs> uh, no, definitely not Teague. <laughs> Linval is already in. No, Alms Collector. Alms Collector is a solid guess, but no, no, not the one I'm talking about. No, a lot of people saying Teague. Oh, Oodlums. Yay, there we go. Great job. Three people guessed it, friends. All right, so yes, Avon Mind Sensor. Absolutely. Um, congrats to the three people who got it back to back. Avon Mind Sensor. Obviously, Opposition Agent was the version I was talking about, but absolutely just insane card. Um, there are games that get shut down by you playing this card, and and there's nothing even close, right? Like, it's just such a strong card. Um, speaking of that effect, let's talk about... Um, oh, damn. What's the stupid name of the card? It's a cat. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Leonin Arbiter, right? I am stuck on this card. I don't know whether it's worth an include here. So this is one I'm, I'm genuinely coming to you guys for. Uh, I think it's really strong, very obviously. It's a very powerful card, right? Uh, stopping your opponent's tutoring early is very strong. Uh, you also stop yourself tutoring very early. Now, we're not searching for combo pieces in the same way that our opponents are, right? But I think with cards like Yisan and Sise stuff like that. Um, we haven't even talked about the fact that we'll probably be playing stuff like Green Sun Zenith, uh, Eldritch Evolution, stuff like that. I think it's not worth it here, but I wanted to talk about it just so people know it's an option, right? As I mentioned before, there are options for making this deck a lot stacks heavier and making it a lot more like really hard win con list. I don't think that's what we should do. Um, so considering option for now. Um, Yo, site, hurry up. <laughs> okay, so another thing I want us to consider here, right, is, uh, wow, it's really struggling with that inquiry. Yikes. <clears throat> so something to think about, right, is we have Deafening Silence. We have Dranith Magistrate. Uh, it's worth thinking about Possibility Storm. For those who don't know, uh, we so we're not playing our own Rule of Laws, right? So we can keep playing creatures and flipping into more creatures. Um, but the if we're not playing the other Rule of Laws, Possibility Storm basically says, if you're not, and, and you have a Deafening Silence out, Possibility Storm says, if you're not casting a creature spell, you can't cast spells. So it basically says, Deafening Silence, Possibility Storm, you can only cast creatures for the rest of the game. With Dranith Magistrate, that says we are the only ones who can cast creatures for the rest of the game. And I think that might be good enough. Now, the problem is, right, Possibility Storm is a big old five mana enchantment. So let me actually pull it up here. I was just waiting for the Leonin Arbiter to get out of the deck. Uh, yeah, so whenever player... So basically, whenever we would cast a creature, we'd random flip into whatever the next creature is from our board, right? Um... So if we don't have Deafening Silence or we don't have Dranith Magistrate, then it's just sort of a weird chaos card. But we don't, in a grander sense, if this card resolves, we do not care what creatures we're playing because we're playing creatures and turning it into creatures, right? And we're trying to fill the board and with Possibility Storm, it does not affect you casting your commander, right? So... At the end of the day, we are casting creatures to add them to the board to add to our creature count and eventually beat our opponents to death, right? And then if we have Silence or Dranith Magistrate, they're done for, right? So that I think it's worth noting there. Um, <laughs> we definitely, at some point, friends, will talk about Winota and the 99. Uh, great mention from someone in the audience here. Uh, Ranger Captain of Eos, fantastic card. It is not only a tutor uh, for one of the many powerful one drops you can see ahead of you, uh, but it's also just a freaking awesome card uh, because it's a silence on a stick that waits there. Speaking of silences, I know we are on some non-creature hate. 
I think traditional silence is still worth playing. Oh, I always have to search for silence individually because there's so many cards that have the word silence in it. <laughs> Here we go. Options, add to main board. Love it. Okay. Um, that's our first instant, LOL. <laughs> uh, I think also, yeah, I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll check over instants. Um, I'm always inclined to, I, I guess, while we're looking at instants that we probably should just play, right? Uh, I always like to play swords to plowshares in my, my white decks. Um, that might be it. Like, I might also want to play path, but... While we're talking about removal, um, when you're playing creature archetypes, you can actually play a lot more creature r removal. So removal on a body. So we have things like Solitude. And we have uh, Skyclave Apparition. I'm actually also going to put Path to Exile here. To Exile. Because I like my, my Path effects. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's, um, going over here to talking about Skyclave and uh, Solitude. And I think that's it for our ETBs for right now. Oh, and Ranger Captain, obviously, because uh, we just added that, and Dockside. Um, some people in chat have mentioned before, and I've heard a lot of talk about Jetmere with anti-ETB effects, right? Uh so things like, um, I'll put them in the considering board because I don't want to actually add them here. Um, but let's talk about Hushbringer, Torpor Orb, Tokatli Honor Guard. And one of the reasons I think is this is an interesting experiment is because, uh, you know, if you want to play a different version of this deck that is taking some of the choices that we made here today and then subverting them, that's totally a valid option for you to do, right? Um, and then the last one is Hush Wing Griff, right? Um, so let's let's look at those cards, right? <laughs> um, so basically what they say is, for example, just to call the honor guard here, uh, creatures entering the battlefield don't cause its abilities to trigger, right? So Dockside doesn't work. Uh, any of the ETBs we just talked about don't work. Thassa's Oracle doesn't work. Stuff like that. So, like, obviously very good against that circumstance. Um, oh, speaking of another fantastic ETB that you can cast for free, Endurance. Um, so given the cards I have just added... Uh, that is why I do not want to add those effects to this list. Once again, if you want to play a list with those effects, totally go for it. They're very, very strong, and they stop two of the most prolific two drops in our format, being Thassa's Oracle and Dockside. I would rather play Solitude. Solitude has been, in Winota, like, um, it's been freaking insane. <laughs> like, Solitude has, has uh, stopped me losing many, many games. It has been an amazing tempo play. Like, being locked under a rule of law and, and Thalia effects and, like, being able to still respond for free at instant speed to stuff your opponents are doing while there's a bunch of stacks on the battlefield. Uh, Solitude's been a winner every single time. And then, uh, you know, in, in a slower game, you can just straight up cast this card, right? You can just straight up cast a 3-2 with flash lifelink and removal spell attached to it. And it's another beater for the jet mirror. Um, also, anytime we're working on a slower white deck, a deck that is attempting to win via combat, trying to grind out the battlefield a little bit, uh, I, I think Sarah Ascendant is a must include. It early in the game, uh, oh, it added it to the maybe board here, uh, so as it did with Endurance. <clears throat> okay, uh, my bad. So Sarah Ascendant, uh, a lot of the time, this is one white... <coughs> Sorry about that. It is one white mana, 6-6 six, six flying lifelink, right? That is absolutely insane, right? And uh, sorry for those, I didn't f highlight endurance earlier. But basically, it is a way to stop Thassa's Oracle wins. It is a way to stop any graveyard stuff. Endurance is big wins in my book. Um, so let's talk about... Uh, three mana folly is fine. Uh, Fury is like the worst version of this effect right because fury is a sorcery speed effect right and we want our removal to be as as quick and instant speed as possible oh yeah um friends some people were mentioning strict proctor as another one of the effects we were talking about earlier uh as the anti enter the battlefield hate effects 
um, oh, right, it went down to the uh, sideboard here. It's just another one. It's any permanent enter the battlefield causes trigger ability trigger counter it let's play two. Once again, we don't want to be doing that because we want our ETBs in this deck. So, um, so then there's the contradiction of do we play Graph Digger's Cage, right? So great at hating out uh, a lot of stuff your opponents will be doing, such as searching their libraries for creatures, things like that. Uh, it stops things like Elsha, stops things like Underworld Breach. But it also stops us tutoring things out of our library. So then Yisan wouldn't be working, right? Um, and then, you know, if we do end up playing something like Green Sun Zenith, if we do end up playing something like um, Eldritch Evolution, then, then those effects don't work. So that kind of sucks, right? Um, I saw someone mentioning earlier, and I think it's worth the include. I think Sylvan Library is definitely worth having in the deck. Uh, fantastic card draw. It is very taxing on our life total. But even if it is, just look at the top three rearrange them every single turn in a grindy game that adds up a ton um some people are also mentioning survival of the fittest i'm gonna put it in the maybe board right now the reason of that being i think we also want to have graveyard hate right um so for me i think rest in peace rest in peace in a stacks deck is very very important and i think we should be you know recognize the fact that you know a lot of broken stuff in the format uses the graveyard so that's that's what it is for now um logan ross good question about rocco uh, i think this rocco seems fine in the 99 right because you're paying a little extra mana compared to something like for say a, a green sun zenith right you're paying a little extra mana but the extra mana you're paying is another body to add to the jet mirror count. So I really don't hate that at all, actually. I think that that seems like a perfectly valid option. Um, I saw a bunch of people earlier talking about professional facebreaker as well. Um, and you may be thinking like, okay, but we've talked about how we're probably going to be on oof and Kotaki and things like that. Uh, professional facebreaker as a way to deal combat damage to your opponent and then give you impulse draw every turn and impulse draw impulse draw for those who don't know is is exile and top card of your library and you can play that this turn um impulse draw that you have control over because professional face breaker is an activated ability on a creature to sacrifice that treasure so even if we do have something like a collector oof out uh your impulse draw still works and also i don't know about you chat but i i think we're we're deep enough in this deck tech uh, where I'm thinking Collector Roof just makes sense, right? I, I think it is it is ridiculous not to be playing that card. Um, so Collector Roof is going in. Um, no Rod and Stony Silence. We will wait until I think the nitty-gritty parts of the deck to think whether we're going to play the non-creature versions of this effect, but we probably will. Uh, I've seen a couple people in chat mention Spirit of the Labyrinth. Let's talk about that card, right? The Labyrinth. Scryfall, don't crash on me again, please. Thank you. <laughs> so Spirit of the Labyrinth. Each player can't draw more than one card each turn. Now, in a deck like Winota, and in a deck like Heliod, stuff like that, the more mono-white-focused decks, this card is very, very good. I do not like it here, because we are in green, and we have access to some really degenerate card draw stuff. So, instead of playing Spirit of the Labyrinth, I would rather, one, play Sylvan Library, like we already talked about, right? Uh, I want to be playing Toski, because Toski is stupidly powerful. Um, boom, Toski Bearer of Secrets. Whenever a creature we control deals combat do damage to a player, we draw a card. Uh, we are literally trying to jam ourselves right into the red zone in this deck, and not playing Toski would be very silly. So Toski, automatically an include, right? Um it's very very good and and the other version of that effect that existed beforehand is orange frostfang now orange frostfang is like toski costs one more mana but <laughs> it has a much bigger body it isn't indestructible downside but it gives our attacking creatures death touch so if we remember the second ability that jetmere has is that creatures we control get plus one plus O oh, and trample as long as we have six or more creatures. Now, for those who don't know, the interaction with trample 
And Death Touch is really, really attractive here because the way Trample works is Trample says you only have to assign a lethal amount of damage to the blocking creature. Well, when you have Death Touch, a single point of damage is lethal damage, right? So say we're attacking in with Ragavan, right? It has two buffs from Jetmir, and we're, we have an Orin Frostfang, right? So it's a 4-1 and our opponent blocks with a creature, right? Even if that creature is like the Gitrog monster and it has six toughness, because Ragavan in this scenario would have death touch, you only have to assign one damage to Gitrog monster to kill it, and three damage actually tramples over. So that's a really cool interaction that uh, I think a lot of people get confused about, and it's really, it's a little counterintuitive in my opinion, but it works, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, Toski is also another fantastic reason to uh, be playing Captain Sisse, like we talked about earlier. Um, huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, what, uh, someone mentioned a perfect card for this deck. Uh, just came out of one of the new uh, Innistrad sets, Adeline. Now, you might be thinking, uh, why are we talking about Adeline here? I'm going to change the art here because that is impossible to read the text on. <laughs> uh, so we're going to select that one. So Adeline, it's as Vigilance, right? Already great. Starting three mana, X4 with Vigilance. Its power is equal to creatures you control. Sure, it's a big beater, right? But whenever you attack for each opponent, create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token that's tapped and attacking that player or a planeswalker they control. End of sentence, they do not go away at the end of turn. So, Adeline, <laughs> the first time, so say you have Jetmir and Adeline alone on the battlefield, that is five creatures that are attacking your opponents in a normal game of Commander with a single swing of Adeline, right? A single swing. This card turns on Jetmir's last ability, the plus three, plus oh, and double strike, Vigilance Trample, like all of that shit together, uh, within two attacks. So Adeline in this deck is just buck wild. Um, yeah, auto include. Uh, so, <laughs> all right. I think several people in the chat are going to have an actual aneurysm if I don't address the the beautiful, beautiful elephant in the room. Um which is, are we going to run Winota? So we don't have the full deck yet, but we already have 80 cards in the main board, right? We have 80 cards. So we still have 20 slots to add. Let's count how many humans we have, and then we'll count how many non-humans we have, and then we'll see <laughs> see if this ends up being a Winota deck. You, uh, All right, so we got one, Absence Pilgrim, not a great hit, first of all. Two, Esper Sentinel. I think that's a pretty solid hit. Uh, Mother of Runes, three, four, Sarah Ascendant, five, Draneth Magistrate, six, Thalia, seven, Adeline, big one, uh, eight, Glow Rider, don't know if this card's gonna stay, but nine, Professional Facebreaker, ten, Ranger Captain of Eos, uh, 11, Yisan. Oh, you can hit Yisan off of Winota. That's so freaking cool. <laughs> and uh, I believe Human Soldier. I believe that was 12. Oh, man, I lost count chat. <laughs> All right, but that's 12. That's 12 hits with Winota so far. Um, and we're still missing 20 cards from this deck. So I think it is safe to say that this will be a, a secret Commander Winota deck. All right, we'll do it. We'll do it, chat. We'll do it. I do this for you, chat. Sorry about that. I'm uh, dealing with some allergies right now. <laughs> uh, but yes, we will add the best girl, Winona Joiner Forces, to this list, at least for the time being. Um, uh, okay, so speaking of Winona, I would love... Uh, so here's, here's something that I think um, that... Uh, People don't. Oh, oh, Sanctum Prelate. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Someone mentioned that earlier. It's a human for Winota. Also, it's just one of the best stacks effects ever printed. Um, I'll die on that hill. I think this card's freaking insane. Uh, Sanctum Prelate is absolutely just a stupid card, right? Like, in a good way, obviously. Um, yeah, I think this card's really pushed. Uh, let's talk about 
sorry, one more thing. While we have, if you notice, like we're, we're a little heavy in the three drops, right? Um, that being said, I think it is safe to add wild growth to this deck. I know it's a non-creature spell, right? So obviously it's a little awkward with some of our tax effects, but the point of wild growth is to get this down early before that's even a relevant factor anyways, right? So that's, that's where our thinking is here. Um, and then I'm also tempted to play Utopia Sprawl because we're only three colors. We can play Yavi Maya as one of our, um, uh, as one of our lands. Uh, I'll, I'll show you a picture of that in a second, friends. Um, and then, and then we can play all of the duels that I talked about earlier. So that's, that's one that I'm tempted. I'm going to put it in for now. People can yell at me later if it's too, uh, if, if, you know, they end up playing this list and it doesn't show up as much as they want it to. Um, so I see some people uh, suggesting Tovalar's Huntmaster uh, as as a winnow to hit. So I think there's two um, there's two human payoffs that I think are actually pretty attractive here. Um, there are two big humans that I think are really strong in tax in uh, <clears throat> sorry stack stacks. Uh, if we were playing Natural Order, which I don't think we're gonna want to. But uh, there's Kamal, which I'm currently playing in my uh, my win con list Abzan deck that I did a deck tech on last week. You can check that video out. Um, but that's uh, it, it, it's playing in there, and we're playing natural order in that deck, so it makes a lot more sense. Um, is a man Kamal, but it also uh, it also can be hit off Winona, which is pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> I, however, I don't think eight mana is the best floor i mean yes it's super attractive when, with winota right like obviously it's really cool there um but the one that i think is a little more realistic that's also a human right right we're also talking about another human here um is averbrook caretaker now the better part about averbrook caretaker here is it has hex proof right um We'll, we'll talk about the back half of this card later, right? But at the beginning of your combat, you put one, two 1-1 one, one counters and another target creature. So it's a hexproof threat for six mana. Uh, can be hit off Winota. Obviously, it doesn't trigger until your next turn. Um, but the fact that it has hexproof means that it sticks around and doesn't get absolutely dongled by, you know, like a chain of vapor. Unlike Kamal, the eight mana threat, right? Like Kamal is super, super freaking awesome if it gets down there, right? Like you you are so happy to resolve your Kamal, but it does lose to a chain of vapor. <laughs> um, and then there is the other side of Abra Caretaker. And this card's almost worth not casting spells for is the back side. So it, it has hexproof. Other permanents you have have hexproof, so uh, you can tell your opponents to shove their removal somewhere and they, they will never be seen again. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, put two plus one plus one counters on each creature you control, right? Like, that's just insane. And it becomes a werewolf that isn't a human that can trigger Winota again for the cute synergies. That's not the really the relevant part here, but I thought that's worth mentioning. Um, but, like, if you don't have Jetmere out... This suddenly gives all your creatures a permanent plus two plus two and protects them. Um, so I think this card is really good. Uh, Shalai is another card I want to at least look at. It's a it's a it's just like a solid card in green white. It's you, Planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have hexproof. It's a three, four flyer. Um, we're getting a little top heavy right now, right? So with that in mind, I am leaning towards not playing Shalai. Uh, but it's a great late game threat and it has that, uh, mana sink ability, which, you know, if you're flooding a little bit, it's really great to just buff up all your creatures, right? So I'm going to put that in considering for now, um, with how many big creatures we're playing, by the way, uh, I know we were talking about bloom tender earlier. I'm happy to <laughs> finally bite the bullet and include this card, right? It's, yeah, it seems, seems very necessary. Um, I'm just going to take a second to read what we're up to here in chat a bit. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, someone was asking about Ravel Master and War Boss. What I'm more interested in is Loyal Apprentice, right? Uh, it's only two mana. It's a human, so it can be hit off of Winota. And the beginning of your combat on your turn, if you control your commander, you get a 1-1 Hasty Thopter. Uh, so you get an immediate creature ready to attack with 
with your jet mirror, uh, I think it's really strong in that sense. So I think Loyal Apprentice is worth looking at as far as that is concerned. Um, I can put some of the other cute stuff in the considering board. So uh, Legion Warboss, it, it just, it's not as big of a payoff as it would be in a deck like Winota, right? Like it's not giving you card advantage in the same way, right? Whereas uh, in this deck, it would just be a body basically. So for those who don't know those effects, uh, they basically, at the beginning of combat turn, they make a goblin. Uh, same thing with Warboss. It's a classic synergy in those archetypes. Um, the other, I guess the other like, question with this deck is like, do we want to put like a real win con in there? I'm leaning towards no. Um, that's, that's about that, really. Uh, I, I think we are doing fine as just like a kill our opponents to death type of archetype. Um, Uh, let's see, just reading. Yeah, so Archon of Valor's Reach is one that I think is worth including. I know, once again, we are very heavy on the top end of this deck, right? Um, but, did I put that in the considering board? I did. Ha ha ha. Okay, sorry. Move to the main board, and then we'll talk about it. Um, this card, in my opinion, is a one-card win condition. Uh I think this card is insanely strong. It's if you resolve it, is this here's the TLDR, right? <laughs> if you resolve this card, there are very there's a good amount of decks in our format that cannot win if you name instant. Uh it's kinda as simple as that, right? Like, yes, it costs six mana, but it is a lethal threat in the air very easily. You don't even really need your commander to make that happen. And it just starts beating the ever living piss out of people. It is it is kind of insane. Um, so then I guess now see now I'm tempted here, given the fact that I want to play Archon of Valor's Reach. We're playing Averbrook Caretaker. We're playing Orin Frostfang. I'm kind of tempted to play Natural Order because being able to turn our mana dorks into one of the things that I just mentioned seems pretty hot. What do you what do you think about that one, chat? I'm going to take a second to wait and see what our opinions are in chat about that one. I'm, yeah, as I said, I'm leaning towards it, right? Because it's, it's just so strong. Yeah. I'll let you vote, chat. <laughs> Stonks. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Chat's with it. Let's do it. Okay, and speaking of which, like, let's let's talk about these tutors, right? So I think we have enough, just like absolutely with Collector Oof and Endurance and uh, Captain Sisse and Toski and Solitude and Abra Caretaker and all these cards. I think we definitely have way more than enough uh, green creatures for Green Sun Zenith. So happy to include that card. Um, for those who don't know, that is a card that I will find at some point. Oh my god, because I put it in the considering pile. Son of a bee. <laughs> Alright. Sorry. Let me change this to the main board. There we go. Um, okay. So, yeah, we have Green Sun Zenith here. Uh, you get to basically pay green and then X and look for any green creature. And then you get to put Green Sun Zenith right back in your deck. Natural Order. For those who don't know, uh, you sack a green creature, which we have a lot of early green mana dorks that I don't mind sacrificing. Like, even if it's something like a Bloom Tender. I, if we can convert a Bloom Tender into uh, any of these cards, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty okay with that. Now, the question is, since we are playing Natural Order, <laughs> do we want to play Kamal over Avabrook Caretaker? That's so hard, because we're playing Winota... I don't know. I think Avabra Caretaker is, like, obviously the more realistic option, but Kamal just straight up gets your opponents dead. Um, yeah. Oh, Eladomri's call. Fantastic option here. Uh, thank you, chat, for that one. Um, for those who don't know, Eladomri's call. Get any creature. Put it in your hand. Instant speed. Fantastic card. Uh, one of the best. I think while we're on instant speed creature tutors... Court of Calling is super solid here. Um, now, the cool thing about Court of Calling is it is expensive, right? But, once again, 
Jetmir gives your creatures vigilance, right? So now we have all these untapped creatures. You can attack, and at the end step, right before your turn, boom, tap all your creatures down for a Court of Calling, get a giant threat out of your deck, and you it, because it has Convoke, Convoke applies the taxes of spells afterwards. So uh, if even if we have some crazy board state where we have Glow Rider, we have Vryn Wingmare, we have Thalia on the battlefield taxing our spells, you can still tap creatures down to pay for those additional costs. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, happy happy to include uh, Court of Calling in here, especially given all of the innate synergy we just talked about. Um, I know I had talked about Eldritch Evolution earlier. I'm a bit hesitant about that card, and here's why, chat. Um, Court of, or sorry, <clears throat> Eldritch Evolution is super stupid strong, but I don't know that we want to be sacrificing our creatures because the whole point is to be amassing a greater and greater board state, and I don't know that any individual tutor targets are going to be worth it. Um, so that's a tough one. Tender shoot. Oh, tender shoot dryad's a really good one. Uh, I think tender shoot dryad is one that I'm gonna leave out for now. We can put it in the in the considering board. Um, it's a really solid win condition. It's one of my favorite cards of all time, uh, as far as like stacks finishers, um, because it basically very well. Okay, I kind of forgot how good this is with jet mirror though. Oh man, chat, you got me doubting myself because now not only do you immediately get the benefit of like Tender Shoot Dryad turning on Ascend and then you're making three threes every turn, but it's also adding more creatures to the battlefield for for Jetmir. Oh man, that's pretty hot. This deck is going to have so much top end. Holy crap. <laughs> oh man, this is going to be a thick deck, y'all. Okay, and, and because of that, obviously, we have to start thinking about considerations for, like, even more ramp pieces, uh, given that, right? Um, uh, just going taking a second to read through chat here, see if there's any cool stuff. Um, I don't want to do a value birthing pod, because we talked about, uh, we are on oof, things like that. Um, finale, oh, thank you, thank you, finale of Devastation. Obviously, really solid tutor, one of the best. Um, and in insane scenarios where you have a guy's cradle tapping for a stupid amount of mana, uh, I didn't fix the stupid thing, did I? <laughs> um, and in scenarios where you have uh, your stuff tapping for a bunch of mana, finale can get you some great stuff. In the early game, being able to catch up to your opponents by finaleing for a dockside is really, really huge. Especially if we're trying to play stupidly big creatures like you know Tender Shoot Dryad. Um, Someone in chat mentioned Sylvan Safekeeper. Kind of one of those never leave home without it if you're playing a green stack stack. Um, sack of land, creature you control gains shroud. You know, we don't need to like target our own stuff with abilities, so the shroud isn't usually a downside. And then, you know, being able to get a ranger captain, right? Uh, and then get a Sylvan Safekeeper off of that seems pretty good. As we're going through this, I'm starting to feel more doubt about Rocco just because of how expensive that card is uh, and what it does. So that that's definitely one that I'm thinking about moving closer to the sideboard, but that's something we can worry about with the nitty gritty later. Um, what's the card that taps for three creature mana? That would be, oh, what is the name of that card? Um, it's got a lady holding the bird. And it's actually pretty solid in this deck. Got a lady. She's holding a bird. Taps for three mana. Chat. Help help other people in chat out with this one. Somberwald Sage. Yes. Yeah. No. Right? Is it? Is that it? Yeah. Somberwald Sage. Yeah. Really good suggestion, chat. I really like that card. Because, uh, you know, say you get... So, say you get, like, one piece of early inter... Um, early ramp so you mana dork turn one turn two somber wild sage then you're untapping with like so uh plus four on turn three so seven creature mana uh when you have the payoffs that we're looking at here I, i'm pretty okay with that oh man we have so many expensive cards <laughs> uh that's a little tough chat we'll, we'll be okay we'll be okay but that it's definitely something to note for sure um 
So Circle of Dreams Druid is one worth thinking about. I don't know. Don't know how I feel about that one. Um, I see someone in chat talking about Serith. Uh, it does a lot of the same things that um, that Shalai does. It's kind of one of those six of one, half dozen of the other thing. Obviously, when your creatures are tapped, they have death touch. That's pretty huge. Uh, you can ta untap another target creature or land, so you can untap your Bloom Tender. You can untap your Gaia's Cradle. Really solid. With the amount of four drops we have right now, I'm going to say no. <laughs> I'm going to cut us off here on this one. Um, I'm going to... Oh, oh. Uh, something I think is worth noting. Uh, this deck right now, the way it is, I think we really want Gaia's Cradle, right? Like, I think any time you want... Like, duh, obviously, right? Like, <laughs> but... I think we really want Gaia's Cradle as often as we can get Gaia's Cradle, and because of that, I think Crop Rotation is a solid option here. Um, that and a solid stacks card that I think will be really cool in this deck that I also think is pretty solid given the amount of utility lands we have access to in these colors. I think Weathered Wayfarer is really, really cool here. Um, because the, because the colors we're in, um, we have access to not only Gaia's Cradle, uh, but we also have access to Baseju, right? The new Baseju from Kamigawa, which is stupid. Um, we have access to all our five colors lands. We have access to Iganjo, another really solid land from, uh, from the new Kamigawa set. So Weather Wayfarer seems like just kind of a snap include here especially given the fact that we're willing to play crop rotation. I think Weather Wayfarer makes a ton of sense. Um, let's go. Uh, just reading more stuff. Oh, Elvish Reclaimer is not a bad option. I don't know if we want to be sacking our lands, especially given the fact that, uh, especially given the fact that we are on like rest in peace too. Uh, so it would be kind of awkward to like pop our lands into exile, you know? Um, I don't know. That, that might be me overthinking that a little much, but I I like Null Rod here. I like Null Rod. I, th I think we want to play at least two of these effects because of the way our deck works. And I think Null Rod and Collector Roof seem pretty solid. We should go back and address the artifact situation. So we are playing Null Rod. We are playing Collector Roof. Um, I think Soul Ring uh, is an auto-include, period. Um, I know there are people who are down on them in, like, decks like this that are so heavy on these effects but i think you include soul ring i think you include mox diamond mana crypt i am i have my reservations on so lotus petal i don't think we can afford to include i think it's one we are going down card advantage to get mana which we can't really afford to do in a stack deck um chromox same thing we're going down a lot of card advantage for a chromox because you're you're two for wanting yourself and then putting yourself in a situation where a lot of the time you will shut down your own chromox so uh, and I just think Mana Crypt, we have Sylvan Safekeeper and, or sorry, not Sylvan Safekeeper, Sarah Ascendant, and Solitude, Hard Cast. Those are our only ways to gain life in this deck. Uh, so with that in mind, I think we cut Mana Crypt. I know is that that is heresy to some people, but if we're trying to play a long game, Mana Crypt will kill us. It it, it will. Um, someone said Esper Sentinel. Esper Sentinel is definitely already in the deck for sure. <laughs> oh, also a fun benefit of uh, Weathered Wayfarer, unless I'm mistaken, it is a human. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Um, okay, cool. Uh, the deck's looking really good right now. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty happy about it. Obviously, we got to work on the mana base. Um, a little top-heavy. Uh, it's, I mean, it's also important to know that, like, Solitude, most of the time, is a zero drop, right? Um, let's see here. Uh, no, I guess the question is, we, we probably just want Worldly Tutor, right? Like, yeah, we just want Worldly Tutor. I, I can't imagine a scenario where we don't actually want Worldly Tutor. It's tough because we are technically going down card advantage while doing that. But, you know, if we're tutoring something like uh, a Toski, 
or a, um, a professional face breaker or Winota. Like it's insane in those circumstances. So we're going to be fine with that. Um, uh, Trinisphere is an interesting one. I've seen Trin Trinisphere throw way more games than win them. And, uh, and, and, and that being said, like, I, I, I don't know. Um, so we're not going to play Spirit of Labyrinth, as we said before, friends, uh, just because of the fact that it shuts off our card draw and we want our card draw. <laughs> um, yeah. I want to see a human count now, see where we're at with that. So we got Avacyn's Pilgrim is one, two, Esper Sentinel, three, Mother of Runes, four, Sarah Ascendant, five, Sylvan Safekeeper, six, Weather Wayfarer, seven, Dranith, eight, Loyal Apprentice, nine, Thalia, ten, Adeline, eleven, Glow Rider, twelve, Facebreaker, thirteen, Ranger Captain, 14 uh, Sanctum Weaver, 15 Somber Wild Sage, good ad there, 16 Yisan, 17 Captain Sisse, we talked about that earlier, it's a human, uh, Winota herself, doesn't count obviously, and 18 Averbrook Caretaker. That's like, there have been versions of my Winota Primer that have played only 18 humans, so like, <laughs> that's pretty solid, I'm, I'm super fine with that. Um, so here's, here's the other thing, friends. Um, uh, so uh, we talked about this before the, the rule of law creatures are in the sideboard. Um, sky shroud elf, that one's being suggested right now. I've never heard of that card. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, you can add green or pay one to add white or red. I think that's just probably way too slow. Yeah. Um, so let's... I, I want to look here, and if we have a bunch of green mana, i.e. talking about Priest of Titania, um, does that give us enough things to cast? And I don't... Like, it's helpful for a number of cards, for sure. Um, I don't know if we need it, per se. That's a tough one. Huh. Okay. Um, here, chat, I need a second here because my allergies are kicking in. So I'm going to go take a two second bathroom break. Um, I will be right back. Uh, <laughs> this is the MLC logo, but it's fine. Uh, this is my BRB screen. I'll be back in literally uh, 30 seconds chat. So just give me a sec. Alrighty, everybody. I'm back. Thank you for your patience. Um, the people talking about Wolfgar in the chat. Wolfgar is not a card that I am very familiar with. Um, Wolfgar, Wolfgar, Wolfgar. Is this the attack trigger doubler? 
Yeah, I don't know why we would want this card. We're not, so we're not trying to like turbo Winota, right? That's not what we're trying to do with this deck. And Winota is really the only attack trigger in the deck. So I don't think that one's happening. Um, and then someone else was asking about, yeah, that's literally the only attack trigger. So, or, or I guess Adeline as well, right? But we're not going to build around two cards in our, our deck. That seems kind of loose. Um, because if we, the more we build around the gimmick of like Secret Commander Winota, the m tougher it gets. Yeah, uh, I think Serith would be good. As I mentioned, I think Serith is a really, really good card here once again. But I, I just think the cost and having another four drop here. You know, I'm willing to say let's cut Rocco. Am I willing to say let's cut Rocco? Yeah, I'm willing to cut Rocco for Sarath. I think Sarath is better than Rocco in a decent amount of scenarios. Rocco is very strong. Uh, Rocco, I think, I, I might even put Rocco just like in the sideboard as like a, this is probably a card you should play at some point. But I think uh, Sarath is stronger in many circumstances. Uh, being able to untap your guy's cradle for more mana, being able to... Uh, turn your attacking creatures into a much harder time to block because as we mentioned with the whole Orin Frostfang thing, uh, that makes it really complicated when all of your hate bears have death touch and it's a human, which is pretty cool. So like that synergy is there. I see a bunch of people suggesting Katilda. Um, uh, Tonhart Prime, right? Um, so human creatures you control... So it at least taps for green and white, and we do have a lot of humans in the deck. That's really interesting. Um, I think it's keepable for now. It's really hard to... It's, it's very synergistic, right? Oh, I'm sorry, chat. Yeah, let me let me put this in the deck list. I'm so sorry. I didn't even put this in chat. That's so silly. Um Katilda Here's here's my thinking with Katilda. If Katilda taps for two mana, and by that I mean if the other creatures in the deck tap for two mana, Katilda is worth it. Just straight up. Um if Katilda doesn't tap for two mana. I think it's just worse than a lot of their options. I think we should also be... Uh, I, so, yes, someone was suggesting Cryptolith right earlier. Um, I also think Earthcraft is kind of insane in this deck. And I think we, are, we have enough reasons to want to play basics that I think we can at least afford uh, one basic of each type and, um, you know... With our color spread, I think we can afford one basic of each type to be playing Prismatic Vista and playing not only a Plains and a Forest, but a Snow-Colored Plains and a Snow-Colored Forest. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's that, that's how I feel about that. Uh, I will put... So, Earthcraft, I'm going to put in there right now because it's basically Cryptolith right with Haste, right? Because the Earthcraft ability allows you to tap... Uh, or, or it basically turns the creatures it you use earthcraft's ability you don't use the creature's ability so you can tap the creatures the turn they come in um now however if when we're going through the mana base we find that it's a little awkward maybe when we do some test hands let's just put cryptolith right in the sideboard there with right which um for those who don't know cryptolith right is literally a uh, creature's control of tap add one mana of any color to your mana pool solid similar option um and obviously with uh Jetmere's ability to give vigilance crypto threat is very very strong right um and there might be an argument to even doing both uh <laughs> yeah already run 32 basics yeah for sure um yeah i don't think we're gonna play a squirrel's nest it's it would be cute it would definitely be a thing we could do for sure uh but i don't think it's necessary yeah, we're, I mean, we're already at 99 cards here, chat. So we're going to start moving over to uh, lands pretty soon. Hmm. So another thing that I tend to do in general when working on lists is uh, not be arrogant enough to think I know everything <laughs> and uh, look at what other people have done, right? 
So I'm going to go over to the CEDH decklist database. And am I going to look at every single deck that exists? No, that would be silly and a waste of my time. Uh, <laughs> but what we are going to do is I'm going to go to similar archetypes and see if there's any cards that they're playing that I think we should be playing. So like Heliod Ballista seems like a, a you know, obviously a classic stack deck. Uh, we're playing Oof, so we don't really need to play Karn. Um, I'll see it's not bad. It's, it, I mean, it's a good thing. It's another thing to like protect your creatures. Um, I think that's a worth like putting in the sideboard. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I forgot one of the cards that we like absolutely should be playing, uh, Cathar Commando. Or, well, so I usually play Cathar Commando because I usually play more rule of law focused decks. Um, so let's look at Cathar Commando here, which I think is automatically going in the. So it has flash, it's a 3 1, comes in, and you can pay one sack and destroy target artifact and enchantment. But. I think we want to be playing the other version because we don't care about rule of law as much in this deck. We care more about the extra value that we can get from this guy whose name is escaping me. The green version of this card. Um, let's go over to Scryfall. Okay, so I know that this is a there's a green version of this card. If anyone can remember it, uh, this card is green and it has uh, destroy. Target artifact or enchantment. And it's a creature. Outland Liberator. Yeah, so this is, it's basically Cathar Commando. It doesn't have flash, uh, but it's a werewolf. And when it's on this side, you can still pay one to sack, destroy target tar artifact or enchantment. But it also has an attack trigger of when it attacks, destroy an artifact or enchantment. And because we don't care about rule of law, the only rule of law we're playing is Deafening Silence. I think Outland Liberator is just in general a bit better in this specific deck so we're gonna we're gonna throw that right in the main board um <clears throat> checking back in with the new chat yeah thank you friends <laughs> um okay cool yep we're gonna move on so uh back to the database looking through here seeing if there's any hate bears that we don't have that I think really pop out. Um, some people earlier were asking about three mana Thalia. It's not really particularly what we're looking for. Um, we already got Prelate. We have Skyclave. Uh, so far, looking good. Um, should also check the artifacts and enchantments. Uh, Chalice of the Void, super defendable option if you ever play this deck. Um, I, I don't personally want to play it, but I think it's super, super powerful card. Uh, Pithing Needle, same thing. Sphere of Resistance. I'm not a big fan of Sphere of Resistance. I know some people play it in their stacks list. Same with Trinisphere. Um, Paladin class is cute. Luminarch Ascension is a win con we're not playing. Kind of interesting. Uh, good with our commander. Good just in general. Very powerful card. Um, Grasp of Fate is very strong. Just getting rid of three non-land permanents. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to put some of these in the sideboard. So let's put Aura of Silence in the sideboard. I think... Or silence, I think. Uh, grasp of fate. It's just, a, I mean, removing three things is pretty solid. I think Winds of Abandon in the same light. I know it's not a card that we're playing, uh, but for those who don't know, Winds of Abandon is uh, basically it's like White Cyclonic Rift, just worse. I think with all the tax effects we're playing, we can't afford to play it, but I just thought it was worth adding there uh, in case people are lower on those at some point historically when playing this. Okay, that's it. Really, as far as I'm seeing for things from Heliod, lessons to be learned. Uh, let's go to a different archetype. Um, so nothing in mono green. Uh, green white. Adaptive Sisse. It's a very similar thing to what we're doing here. So that, I mean, we literally are playing Sisse in our list, right? So uh, obviously... It's a little different when you have access to Sisse in the command zone. Uh, yes, I'm aware I'm not playing Carpet of Flowers. Uh, quick TLDR on that is I don't really play Carpet of Flowers anymore because I play in a lot of different metas. Um, specifically, I play in a lot of tournament metas. And what I'm seeing a lot from these tournament metas is that people are playing a lot more either blue list decks or when they're playing blue decks, they're Turbo Nas decks, which tend to use a lot of like five color lands, which tend to use like the Battle Bond lands. 
or if they have an island on the battlefield, they have a single island on the battlefield. It's not like the old days where Carpet of Flowers was like every game making you three mana. So I'm a little lower on that card. Um, cards here that I had been thinking about that I didn't say out loud. Destiny Spinner. I know we haven't put in the sideboard, but I think it's at least worth talking about. Especially if we are going to go with the possibility storm line. Uh, worth noting. I think we still have that in the main deck. I think it's worth at least trying. Uh, it probably gets cut at some point, especially... You know, I, I'm going to be responsible here. We're going to cut Possibility Storm. Uh, it's really, really strong if it happens, but <laughs> the odds of it actually happening seem pretty low. Um, and you know what? Screw it. We'll, we'll play Earthcraft and Crippleth right for the time being. That's that's what I'll say for, for now, until we find some better options. Um, yeah, however, there are, you know, <laughs> Colossal Dreadmaw. <laughs> ah, chat, you kill me. You guys are great. <laughs> um, let's see, is there anything else here? Kataki, which uh, I might... I'm, I'm thinking about including in the main deck for sure. Um, you're going to see some weirder cards in this list specifically because the, the fact that they win with a Shia lines. Uh, so it's not obviously just a, a stacks deck in that same sense. Um, it's nothing in the instance we, we want same thing with veil of summer same argument as carpet of flowers friends uh, a lot of a lot of the same mentality in that um okay so i think that's all like we can learn from sisse not all we can learn but all i want to learn at the current moment um winota obviously i'm gonna look at my list because you know <laughs> why not you know uh hype up my own deck um hope of gear is a cuter card that we could play it's it's like a silence on one person's uh turn cycle uh cliffside rescuer i've had a lot of uh good success with as of late in winota but that's i think it's just more of a winota card um crater maker is cute but we have better cards because we're in green too uh the two mana mana dorks we don't need because we're in green as well remorseful cleric it's actually kind of cute i can put that in the sideboard remorseful just another graveyard hate piece uh someone mentioned lion sash earlier in that same light and we also have um scavenging moves in these colors i find them to be way too slow for cedh but I'll put them in the sideboard, and you can, you know, make your own opinions about those cards when we're going through. Um, I guess is in our sideboard. We have our recruiters. Once again, I don't really think that's what we're trying to do with this deck, but we're talking about... Um, okay, I think we're good with Winota. Uh, one deck that I'm excited to use as a reference here that I think is the closest analogous uh, deck we have here is Bruce Kamal stacks. Uh, this is like literally just the epitome of a win con list, right? They're playing literally Bruce for the colors and like, yes, double strike, blah, blah, blah. And then Kamal is just like this end game engine they're going towards. Um, so they're playing Alsor Shepherds in ours, in theirs. Sorry, excuse me. Um, that's worth talking about. Alosaur. I cannot spell. Uh, Source Shefford. Um, it's a good card. We have a lot of white spells, which is the reason I'm like humming and hawing on Allosaur Shepherd. But it's, I mean, it's obviously very, very strong. Um, yeah. It, it, you could tell me that you're playing Allosaur Shepherd, and I would be like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Especially when you have things like Finale and Natural Order uh, in your deck. I think it's also worth adding Eldritch Evolution to the sideboard because I realize we've talked about that card a bunch and haven't actually added it. Okay, let's see. Chat saying anything else. Cool. Torian Mahler and Mana Gordon Hydra. That is very, very cool. Um, yeah, chat, I just want to also, like, it's important to remember when we're looking at these things. Uh, you know, don't... Uh, don't don't give too much up towards, uh, you know, sort of the the synergy of we are playing Winota in the deck. And there's definitely a lot of ways to find Winota, but we don't want to also make it so much so that like every time the card's a human, we're throwing it in the deck for no reason. Why <laughs> why are people suggesting Kozilek in chat? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so back to brute force. Um, Uvenwall tracker is actually worth looking at because uh, 
when you have big creatures, it turns out fighting your opponent's stuff is pretty okay. Fauna Shaman's also good in case we want to, like, if we were to go the survival line. So, I believe we already have survival of the fittest in the sideboard, right? We do. Um, so, Fauna Shaman. Uh, we want to put in the sideboard. It's just survival on a creature. Um, Ulvenwald, right? That's how you spell it. It's Ulvenwald. Yeah, it is. Uh, tracker. And actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put Ulvenwald Tracker in the deck right now. Because I actually think that card's pretty decent. Is it better than Allosaurus Shepherd? No, we're going to put Allosaurus Shepherd in. <laughs> this is this is mid live decision making, friends. Uh, taking out Tracker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out Earthcraft. Uh, I think Earthcraft is really, really solid. But I think we'll try Cryptolith right and see if that is fine. Ah, man, I don't know. The haste on Earthcraft is so impactful. I just don't want to mess up our mana base to try and play Earthcraft, you know? So, um, okay, let's, let's go back to this list and stop having ADHD for a minute. Priest of Titania, I know we haven't actually put in our Titania. Thank you. We haven't actually put that in the sideboard, even though we mentioned it like 16 times. Garrick's Harbinger is a card I never thought I would see. Looking for creatures or Garrick cards. Okay, that's cute. Um, playing it, playing it, playing it in our sideboard, playing it, playing it in our sideboard, playing it, playing it. Cool. Meltdown's not... What's our artifacts looking like right now? Oh, I didn't want to add Shepard. That's why. Okay, here, here we go, chat. I didn't want to add Shepard because... Okay, so if you look over here to our artifacts, we have four... <laughs> and the ones that we care about staying on the battlefield are Null Rod and Thorn of Amethyst. And you know what I'm willing to pay every turn? One or two mana to keep those cards around and play Kataki. Um, that's my, my thoughts for right now, at least. All right. <clears throat> I, I don't know why people keep suggesting Kogla. I don't really see the benefit of playing Kogla. It is... It, it's, it's just fine. Um, so yeah, there is the option to play a card like Secure the Wastes, uh, no, we're definitely on Dockside, um, you can play a card like Secure the Wastes, you can play a card like March of the Multitudes, they're fine, I would just rather have cards that actually do stuff, yeah, Toski is also in there, friends, um, oh, here, let me repost the link in chat so we can, in case anybody is confused, uh, and so we can just have everybody checking out this deck list. Hey, all right, it's back in chat, friends. Um, cool. So let's go back to this brute force list. Meltdown, I would like to play, but I, I think two is a very easy number to hit. Oh, Stranglehold's not bad. Four mana is a lot, and with all of our non-creature attacks, I would just rather play Mind Sensor. I mean, I know they're playing both in this deck. Um, I'll, I'll at least throw it in our sideboard. Chalice, like we talked about beforehand. Uh, okay, so so not too much from Kamal. And then there's one more Naya Stacks list. I guess the other one to reference is Blood Pod, right? Like, that's the classic. Uh, obviously, now Blood Pod has black in it. Um, Blood Pod. All right, let's check out Butterfree. See if they have any cool stuff in there that we're not on. Vivian, which we don't have Vivian combos, so we're not going to go that hard on it. And we're going for a win con list build anyways. I should at least put Carpet in the sideboard. Uh We've passed it and talked about it many times. I'm not going to play it because of the reasons we talked about earlier. But if you want to play it, you're absolutely defensible in that option, especially if your meta reflects that that card is good. Um, not seeing much from Blood Pod that we can play, that we should be playing. Uh, they're also on Meltdown, which is cool. I'd just rather play Kataki. Yeah. Um, also, I've, I have thought about deflecting SWAT chat. I know people are, probably have thought about that at one point. I have intentionally not chosen to play that card because I think uh, we want Jetmir to come down and sort of end the game. Um, and it's also a non-creature spell. I, I don't know. It might just be worth it, to be honest. But I'll at least put it in the sideboard here. So deflecting. Also... We are on 32 lands in a, like, we our, our mana requirements are pretty big in this deck, but we're also on all of these dorks, um, and the, uh, the, the enchantment versions, too. 
So that's interesting, at least. Um, hmm. Okay, I think the deck's looking pretty good right now. Uh, yeah. Just reading chat in case. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know how to take some of these things y'all say in chat, guys. Uh, no, Teamer Sabretooth plus Face Breaker plus Dockside is like it, yeah, it's a way to get infinite mana. But like you're playing Teamer Sabretooth, which isn't a card we want to play anyways, and then expecting a three card combo that your commander can't help make happen or be a part of seems kind of loose right um that's that's my inclination at least uh so the the part most magic players struggle to deal with and that i think will be important for us is uh dealing with the land base i think okay let's count how many mana sources we have uh, that are not lands. We have Arbor Elf, Absence Pilgrim, Birds of Paradise, Elvish Mystic, S. That's not a land. So uh, let's just count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, in a sense, that's a land tutor. So eight ish. Nine, ten, sometimes. Eleven. Is that where we lost it? Uh, oh, and then um, the big one over here, 12. Okay. So 12 big mana sources plus our three, two artifacts that make mana plus our enchantments. I don't know, 32 planes seems, or uh, 32 lands, I should say, seems appropriate. I was thinking about going down one and playing Stony Silence, but that also continues to cut off more of our mana, and I, I don't know. I think there's, like, there's a very solid reason Stony Silence is right here in the sideboard, right? It's a very, very good option. Um, maybe if you're on carpet, you go down to 31 lands. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's that's cool. Uh, just reading chat. Seeing Augur of Autumn. That card's pretty decent. Um, that's actually worth looking at. Augur of Autumn. At least throwing in the sideboard for sure. I didn't put that in the main deck, did I? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, that's a that's a good suggestion, chat. So it's 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 you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You can play lands from the top of your library, and if you have Coven. Uh, you can also cast creatures from the top of your library. And with the amount of creatures we have in our deck, what's our count right now? It's probably something stupid. Yeah, 46 creatures. So Augur of Autumn's not bad. Like a, a creature future site is super solid. Um, I think we're at the point, though, where I'm just going to focus on the lands. And then if people want to... I, I think Augur of Autumn is good enough that I am confident in putting it in the sideboard and not the, the maybe board um, and going from there. But uh, let's, I think Carpet's also one of those cards. I, once again, we're not on it for the reasons I talked about, but we're also playing a very slow game. So, you know, I'll put it in the sideboard just to respect the power of the card. Um, I think Deflecting Swap probably also deserves to go there. The sideboard is what I put for cards that I'm like, man, these are right on the precipice, right? Um, but let's focus on the mana base. Uh, Blind Obedience, yes, that is also for sure. Um Blind Obedience. For those who don't know, Blind Obedience is a pretty solid tempo piece. We have Manglehorn kind of doing the same thing here, um, but it also allows their creatures to come and tapped. Uh, it's just a non-creature version of a thing we're trying to do, so I'm, I'm, I'd rather play other options. But Blind Obedience is very solid. I know a lot of people are more high on that card than I am. I'm not too in love with it. All right, so... How do you make a CEDH mana base, right? Um, let's start with the, I, I would say, the lands that it is ridiculous not to include. <laughs> uh, and for me, that's Command Tower, right? Uh, I don't know why you'd be in a multicolored deck and not include a land that taps. I put it in the wrong freaking spot. All right. Uh, sorry about that. Back to main board. There we go. Um, Command Tower. Taps for five colors. Super solid. Um, I... There are people who do not agree that this is an auto-include. I put Gemstone Caverns in every one of my CEDH decks. You have a 75% chance of this being a command tower that, yes, you have to exile a card out of your hand for, 
but it is a permanent mana. It's a better Mox Diamond forever if you are not on the play. Uh, yeah, seems good to me, right? Like, I I love that card. Um, Exotic Orchard, I often do not leave home without. Oh my god, I cannot type. Sorry. Um, I also don't leave home without Forbidden Orchard. This is a deck that I am willing to sideboard Forbidden Orchard early. Yeah, because of how important combat is to this deck. I don't love that decision, but that's, I don't know. Um, I will not play Ancient Tomb in this deck. If you look at the colorless payoffs, it's super not worth it. We need our colored mana sources, absolutely. Um, but the real thing you should always start with when you're working this EDH deck is, in my opinion, the duels and the fetch lands. So let's go down the order, the green ones, right? Because uh, we, we are able to have access to all the ones that have our color identity. Um, so let's go from there, right? Uh, so the green ones, we'll do Verdant Catacombs, which is green and black. Let's do uh, Wind Swept Heath, which is green white. Let's do green red, which is wooded foothills. And let's do Misty Rainforest. Green ones are all taken care of. The red ones, let's do Arid Mesa. We have Bloodstained Mire. Now, so here's the thing with uh, higher color decks. Um, Scalling Tarn. Uh, we just did red, blue, red, white, red, black, and then red, green we already took care of. So we're good on that. Because if we, if we remember earlier, our red is so low in this deck, right? 7% uh, <laughs> of our mana symbols are red, okay? Compared to 43 and 51% being green, white, right? So, like, this is this is a concept of red. <laughs> it, 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 there's a, like, version of this deck that doesn't even play red cards. That's Winota, Facebreaker, Loyal Apprentice, Dockside, and Ragavan for our red cards, right? That's literally it, apart from our commander, right? So... The red is really, <laughs> red in this deck is a concept piece. So like, it's important to realize that when we're building this mana base, that like, there's gonna be scenarios where you have a red fetch uh, and you get kind of dongled by it, right? Because if it's a red fetch without the ability to grab one of your other two colors, it kind of sucks. Um, just worth mentioning there. Um, okay, so that was our red fetches. Uh, one of the reasons I don't wanna play Earthcraft, right? Because a basic mountain is really, really bad in this deck. Uh, and you have to kind of play that. Um, okay, and then let's go with the white ones. So we have the ones we haven't talked about yet are Marsh Flats and Flooded Strand. And then we have the white green one. We have the white red one. So that should be all. So we should have access because we're a three color deck to seven fetch lands. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, just kidding. We should have access to nine. I'm a clown. The other one we don't have access to is the one that's the opposite of our colors, which is blue white, right? Or not blue white, Jesus. Blue black, right? We don't have access to polluted delta. Um, yeah, sorry, misspoke there. We have access to nine fetch lands out of ten, which isn't bad. It's a pretty good amount of fetch lands for this deck. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I tend to avoid playing Triomes at all costs. That's me personally. If you guys want to play Triomes, that's super cool. Um, let's play all the duels, right? So we have Taiga. We have Savannah. And we have Plateau. Uh, I am someone who will always play the five color lands if I can. So let's do City of Brass. It's basically same version of itself, Mana Confluence. Uh, that's really it for the... F so you can play uh, Tarnished Citadel, which I don't hate, um, but we don't have to play it, so I'm putting that in the sideboard for right now. Uh, three damage is a lot, and as I mentioned, we have two ways to get life back in this deck, so, you know, three damage is a lot, especially when you're a stack stack, and people are going to be like, well, the stack stack is locking us down, beat him to death, you know, it's a, it's a real reaction people have. Um, uh, let's go with, obviously, the best land in the deck, uh, Guy's Cradle. 
Guy's Cradle is a dumb card. There's a reason, you know, it, well, the words there's a reason it's $1,000 are not something I feel comfortable saying out loud, but, you know, it's a good card. <laughs> um, as we mentioned, we're heavy green, so we can rely on these cards like Beseju. Um, the good Beseju, not the colorless one. No, the other one's good, but, like, this is the dumb Beseju. Um, and then Igonjo. Uh, I believe it is Seat of the Empire. That is the new one. Uh, you know, we get to play a land that's also a removal spell or a, you know, removal spell for artifacts and enchantments or non-basic lands. Uh, seems stupid in a good way. <sighs> okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, Green-white lands that I think we need to include. Horizon Canopy. Very solid card. Happy to play it. Uh, it is pain land, but you can pay one to draw a card. Um, I say we play all the ones in our colors. So we have one more that is uh, Sun-Baked Canyon. That is a um, red and white one. Uh, I think we should play Bountiful Promenade. Bountiful Promenade, for those who don't know, is the Battle Bond uh, green-white land. Very solid option here. Um, let's see, chat, have any other land options? Oh, we talked about Yavi Maya earlier for sure. Uh, we want to play as many forests as we can. I think Yavi Maya Cradle of Growth it turns all your lands into forests. Um, we should play a lot. I, I think we should play all our shocks in this deck. I think we're a three-color deck. We can afford to play all of them. Um, so we're going to do that. So that's Temple Garden. That's Stomping Grounds. And that is a Sacred Foundry. Once again, our red is more of a splash in this deck, but like if anything, that means we probably don't play Sunbed Canyon, but I think the ability for this to be just a mono white land is more than fine. Um, there's an argument to playing some, like a basic forest, one to worry about like other people's back to basics or other people's um other people's uh blood moons and it's really good with arbor elf and with utopia sprawl so i think for those reasons alone uh i think we'll we'll include a forest i think of a snow-covered forest because we can ha 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 uh and make it a good art come on You know, I have a I have a foil version of this. We're gonna do that. Boom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a fun story with that that I'll I'll tell on another date. Um, yeah. I'm thinking about the the other battle bond lands, which are fine. I just don't want to go too hard into that. <laughs> spleen get out of here with your temple of the false gods i don't want to hear it <laughs> um so i'm also thinking that so kenzen might not be a bad include once again we don't really want a mono red land given how you know i think i'm sort of answering my question for itself but it does make two bodies which is kind of cool i don't think we need to play this card and i think i'm going to redact that even to be like i don't want to play this card but it is cool that we have a land that could also be bodies. I don't want to play it. Get it out of here. Um, <clears throat> let's think. What other lands can we play? Uh, there's also like an option to also play a planes, which is fine. You can. I like. It's not sexy. No one likes it. Um, I, I'm getting a lot of Dryad Arbor love here in chat. I absolutely hate Riot Arbor. Um, yeah. Uh, so Kenzen is a, in, in actual factual Winota for sure. Uh, Y'all, you're killing me here with Riot Arbor. I think that card's so bad. Like, uh, it just is a, like, it's a slow land. It's, it's just, I don't know. It, it doesn't tap for mana the turn it comes in. I got already in chat. Uh, Yep, Masage is already in chat as well. Um, yeah, and then, like, there are archetypes where it's fine. Like, I've played it before in Hermit Druid because it's another body to sack to Dread Return, but, like, oof, I don't know, man. Um, 
Chinchur Brute in every deck. Yes, chat. That's the stuff we need to know. <laughs> um, okay. So we got we got two more slots. Um, I, I think the Pain Lands are fine. Um, so that would be we're talking about. Let's go here for the Green White. Oh, what is that one? Does anyone know the Green White Pain Land? Does one damage to you every time you tap. Um, uh, yeah, I think the also the the modal double face cards are fine enough that I think we can include them. So Amiria's call, MDFCs as they are known. Um, for those who don't know, Amiria's call. What? Oh, did it get moved down here? Oh, right, here we go. So it's. I mean, it makes a bunch of bodies and makes your creatures indestructible if you cast it. And if not, then it's just a. It's a land on the backside. So that's cool. And then the other one is. Oh no! It's turn timber symbiosis. There we go. <coughs> turn timber symbiosis. Beautiful. Same thing. Uh, gets you some card advantage if you end up having to cast it. Uh, now, once again, we probably won't ever cast these things, but they're free enough right now where I'm not worried about it. Um, Horizon Brushland. Thank you, Alex Garcia. <coughs> In chat. Thank you so much. Brushland was the land I was looking for earlier. That is the pain land. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right, cool, 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 cool. And then we have one more land slot. All right, any? I'm, I'm open to suggestions here from chat. What are, we, what are we all thinking? Oh, yeah. I mean, I just went on a whole tirade about how we don't play a mono red land but like this one's removal so like shatter skull smashing even if we only play it like even if we look at this as our 31st thing right like uh, as our like if we treat sm shatter skull smashing as it will never be cast as a or it will never be played as land and we only treat it as a bad removal spell that's fine with me that occasionally like acts in the way we need it to that's fine um so that's it we did it. We got 100 cards here, chat. Um, congratulations. We have done it. <laughs> so it's a Caracas. That is definitely banned, friends. Um, heck yeah. All right. So, chat, this is the first ever solo live brew here on the channel. Feel free to tell me what you guys think of these uh if you guys enjoy them if you enjoyed going through the entire brewing process it was a bit of a bit of a time commitment but i also enjoy doing these um it's gonna go live on the channel probably in the morning uh and repost it as a regular video so if you're watching this on youtube uh as far as after the fact um then feel free to comment down below on whether you guys like stuff like this whether you're enjoying these um I, I think this are really helpful for showing the entire brewing process from beginning to end as far as the initial brews. And I'm really excited that we got to do this. I had actually had a really fun time chat. Um, this has been really fun. I also have been talking a lot in the discord right now with some people really interested in brewing Oscar. Hey, let me let me see if I can pull that up on Scryfall here. Uh, one of the new commanders from Oscar the Grouch. Uh, rubbish reclaimer. Um, I I'm very excited about this card. So if we want, uh, you know, people can leave comments and stuff like that about. Uh, oh God, who's asking about architect? Yikes. <laughs> um. Anyways, but uh, yeah, if if you guys want to check out, uh, do one of these for Oscar next week, maybe. Um, I would be really into doing that. As I mentioned, I'm also doing a uh, a show, so my weeknights are a little less available than they will be after uh, the end of May, but. Um, I, I really want to think about doing this stuff more often. I've, I've thought about doing these and uh, some maybe some gameplay over on Twitch and then reposting them onto the YouTube channel. So feel free to tell me how you guys like, if you guys are enjoying these and if you enjoy the concept of doing these. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, I will, I would go through some mulligans with these right now, friends, but uh, it has been two plus hours of doing this and uh, I do have to be up in uh not in a, a great amount of time for work in the morning as i get up really really early so <laughs> uh i will be signing off uh but unfortunately that that is okay uh thank you guys for joining this has been really fun i really enjoyed doing this with chat um i've been really enjoying doing some of this live stuff uh i can post the moxfield link literally right now chat thank you um 
but yeah, uh, also the usual stuff, guys. If you enjoy content like this, please make sure to hit like. That's one of the best ways to let me know that you guys are enjoying this is it's one of those things that just doesn't go away. So hitting that like button is actually really, really helpful to let me know what you guys enjoy watching. Um, hitting subscribe, obviously, super cool. If you want to keep watching content like this, that little bell icon to let you know when stuff like this happens. I'm always posting stuff in the Discord that is free access for every person. Uh, so feel free to come in there. And there's also a channel for patrons, which brings me to the next point. If you really want to support this channel and uh, help me to you know, keep expanding this channel and what I'm able to do with it, stuff like that, uh, feel free to uh, check out patreon.com slash comedian MTG. Any support helps out the channel a ton, everybody. All right. And uh, this is me signing off. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for everyone who joined us here live. Hope you guys have an amazing week and uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace.